There's a world of possibility if you coat an existing game with another property. Give Doki Doki Panic a coat of Mario paint and you get what we call Mario 2. Give Shara and the Wanderer a coat of Pokemon paint and you get Pokemon Mystery Dungeon. Give Guilty Gear a coat of Persona 4 paint and you've got, well, Persona 4 Arena. And Atlas wasn't satisfied stopping there, so instead of bending Arc System Works ear again, they took their idea down the hall to where Etrian Odyssey is developed and... pow. Persona Q Shadow of the Labyrinth, which might as well be called Persona 3 and 4 get mashed up and pushed through the Etrian Odyssey filter, subtitle, Hope You Like Maps. Because that's just what it is. We'll talk later. We've come to help. It's important to understand, though, just where this game lies. After all, the whole canon between Persona 3 and 4 has already been fleshed out through two entries in the P4A series, where time works like you'd expect. The Gekokan students from Persona 3 are in fact three years older than their counterparts from Yasugami High in Persona 4, and there's a new crisis involving the TV worlds and Inaba and Labyrinth shows up and all that jazz. We'll throw that out of the window. There's been a time rift in the casts of both games, plus the outlier characters from the remakes, like Theodore and Marie, find themselves stuck in a spatially dubious version of Yasugami, where everyone's stuck inside a big old culture festival. Every classroom is set up as a game room, or a cafeteria, or a display of some sort, including four which lead to massive multi-floor Etrian Odyssey-style dungeons. Firing! And here's where the real magic happens. The game blends the casts of two games while blending the mechanics of three into a stiff foam that tastes great and is less filling. The long-form, life-threatening delves from the Etrian series return in force, or you have to draw every map yourself and scour every corner of each floor for shortcuts and items to potentially make your life easier. The combat blends the two-line, five-unit team structure of Etrian with the weakness-targeting mechanics of Persona, where striking an enemy's Achilles heel grants that character a boost status that allows them to act first in the next combat round and reduces the cost of skills to zero. And following the Persona mechanics, you can ask for support and data from Fuka and Rise. Despite their stark differences, these two series actually gel rather well together. And that's partly because they're blending two flavors of unflinchingly brutal RPG. Fortunately, if you want to just see the story of two casts of Persona games forced to deal with each other as equals, you have the option of dialing down the difficulty like Wimp. On the other hand, there are two settings harder than normal as well if you want your brain to run out your ears like so much maple syrup. If you're coming from the Etrian Odyssey side, you might be playing a bit of catch up on the backstory, though any particularly crucial bits of plot are brought right out in the open. After all, each team doesn't know the other in this particular world, so it looks like two groups of Persona users getting to know one another also counts as sufficient exposition for newcomers who just want to draw some maps and beat up some FOEs. The character art represents a chibified take on the iconic Shigenori Sojima artwork, maintaining the basics of style while being utterly adorable. And in keeping with form, it comes alongside another unbelievable Shoji Meguro soundtrack with enough odd mashups of hip hop and energetic English lyrics to fuel all of your doubts. If you were waiting with bated breath for Etrian Odyssey Untold 2, Persona Q will help you pass the time, but if you also happen to be a Persona fan, Q might just be the cleverest gadget this side of Desmond Llewellyn. It's not without a couple foibles though, some of the mechanics, including the intricacies of Persona Fusion and how to utilize skills on your support team's Personas, aren't really covered in detail and have to be searched out. The request system has you recovering a lot of ground and often demands that some underleveled character from your reserves be included for arbitrary reasons. And, despite the power to repurchase any Persona you've registered, it'll be some time before you actually have the cash to do so. This is alleviated a bit by a couple free DLC Personas like Orpheus, Telos, and Kaguya, which can boost you through the early game if you need. If you're a hardcore fan of either series, though, chances are you're gonna scoff at the gimmies and dig right into one of the best RPGs of the year. Especially if you like stealth Sazai-san references. Like this? Hey, I got him! Huh? I got two too! Oh, not bad! Mm. <laughs> I'm sorry. 